13 down to 20 seconds to go in this opening quarter. Starks playing Drexler. Williams over to help. Good switching by the Knicks. Duckworth. And Drexler and Mason have words. But Williams steps between. Oakley calls for the foul. You rarely see Fly Drexler get involved. I was thinking earlier, Marv, I don't think I've ever seen him angry. He's such a cool guy, and uh, it is unusual as you point out. Kevin Duckworth for Mason. Too late. After one, it's the next 25. The Portland Trailblazers 14. Before with Anthony Mason and Clyde Drexler under the basket. I think that right arm on Drexler's chest might have bothered him from Anthony Mason, and he let Anthony know about it, but it didn't go any further than that. Clyde Drexler sitting down. After Mason knocked it away. And away. Yes. Oh, we have something brewing here. Anthony Mason involved, along with Chris Morris. Mason wisely walks away. Well, we discussed this earlier. There are some bad feelings between several Knicks and Nets. And as uh, you mentioned, in particular, Mason and Oakley and Coleman and Morris. And Mason carrying the we were embarrassed phrase into this game from the last game. Perhaps some of the Nets read the paper today and didn't enjoy the tough talking from the Knicks. Joe Wilkins piling his way inside. Mason battling for position. Morris behind him. And then Morris swinging that arm around to get rid of Mason. That started things. The crowd reacted because they saw it up on the uh, garden. Oakley. Bowie was fouled. The Knicks collapsing on Bowie. Ewing call for the foul. Ewing with some words for Morris as they make their way down court. Those aren't happy words either. And now Bowie comes over. Why McDaniel with a shove. Why don't the officials step in? I don't think they realized what was going on at first. And McDaniel is pushed down by Bowie. That's unbelievable. We we'll saw the officials on the floor. Well, he tried to keep Bowie away and lost his balance. Oakley having having some words now with Coleman. This began in very mild fashion with Chris Morris and Patrick Ewing in a heated conversation walking up the court. And Mark Jackson and Derek Coleman now are having some strong words. Mason gets to the ball. Starks. John Starks with a pretty move. That's 82. The Knicks 74. All Mason and Bowie eyeing each other. John Starks is four for four from the field. He has nine points. Knicks trail by two. Oh, the, the foul is called on Starks, a pushing foul. John Starks <laughs> taking on Rambus with his hands. That was a blatant foul. And he might have intended to do that. He might have had that pre uh, preordained that move um, to shake up things. Maybe he's had his bell rung a few times and he just wanted to use a foul. That, that's, that sends a message. Remember John Starks getting involved in the starts with the steal and he is fouled from behind by Richmond. Last season in the game played here at Sacramento, the Kings beat the Knicks in overtime and Starks very involved physically. Jackson getting it back out. The next 54 and 
Phoenix 50. The left Jackson at his best, setting up Patrick Ewing beautifully. Collecting his third. Take another look at Mark Jackson in action, which, by the way, as we recognize today, is his middle name, and Patrick Ewing, a beneficiary of that. Jackson. Look out, Mason and Chambers started to go. Well, Chambers doesn't know about it. He just turns around and runs up court. The basket counts. And a foul called on Mason. Cotton Fitzsimmons wants more. Well, Mason off the bench a moment ago, lower left side. You see Mason having an effect on uh, Chambers, certainly. Chambers on the ground at that point. Jackson's quickness enabled that to happen. Here's Perry. Serving up a facial on Patrick. Starts with the step. Take another look at John Starks' amazing move, how he elevated to the hoop. Kept going higher and higher, and then the arms stretched out like Julius Irving's used to do. Some of the lesser teams this season. Seven point Phoenix lead. Minute 20 remaining in this first quarter. Starks from deep. That's a three. John Starks hits the three-pointer. And the Knicks go with it four. Ainge creaming John Starks. And boy, our cameras were right on that. Wow. That's why it's good to focus off the ball once in a while. <laughs> Thank you, Danny Ainge, for helping make this an entertaining show. Offensive foul. On eight, who was still debating the call with the official Jim Clark. Anthony racing with Johnson. Anthony, nice. The emotion of Xavier McDaniel will not be on the floor today. How much does that hurt the Knicks? I think the X-Man was the panacea for the Knicks because he could contain Pippen. Not only the tenacity that he brought to the game, but he did a good defensive job against Scotty, actually exposing Scotty, taking him out of the game. So there you see the X-Man pugnacious, loquacious, hellacious against the Bulls. Now a lot of that banging will be picked up by Anthony Mason and maybe some of the talking too, uh, if Pat Riley will allow. series between the Knicks and the Bulls, and the Bulls were very upset about the roughhouse tactics of the Knicks. We saw John Starks with the flagrant foul on, on Scotty Pippen. It was a combination of Xavier McDaniel and Anthony Mason. John Starks. Who... Pippen throws it back out. Jordan oh, giving the shot. Uh, Pippen, rather, and Xavier McDaniel getting into a severe brush. McDaniel thrown to the floor by Pippen. And a technical also called on McDaniel. It's hard to figure, Mar, from McDaniel's standpoint. He's the one that got thrown to the floor, but the foul was called prior to that. Maxim will shoot the tee. When the New York Knicks faced the Chicago Bulls in Game 6, they weren't thinking about their own elimination. No, these Knicks sense something special about this improbable playoff run. Even the sight of Patrick Ewing limping off with a sprained ankle didn't mean the end. For the Knicks faithful, it rekindled memories of Willis Reed and that championship year when he found the courage to overcome injury. And in a similar inspired effort, Patrick Ewing rejoined the battle. And battle he did. He threw his will into his work and his wounded body into the opposition. And when it was done, and he had nothing left to give, only then was he led away victorious. But a funny thing happened on the way to the Eastern Conference Championship. The Knicks took the heavily favored Bulls to the limit, physically and emotionally. Of course, time will tell. But as Jimmy Roberts reports, the Knicks series may just have been a wake-up call for the defending champions, one they needed.
While the stadium is known for its noise, that sound you might have heard rising above the Chicago skyline Sunday was probably a long, deep sigh of relief. Against New York, the Bulls thought sweep, the Knicks thought otherwise, and from the back pages to the back court, therein may lie the key for the series against Cleveland. Well, maybe that's enough to wake us up and, and get us back to playing the type of basketball and having that the hunger that we had last year. But the Bulls haven't played a basketball game in some two weeks against anybody other than the New York Knicks. Now in the space of just two days, they will be forced to shift gears and radically at that. Because the difference between a series against Cleveland and one against New York is like the difference between ballet and slam dancing. I expect, you know, it's still going to be a lot of hard fouls, maybe a few flagrant fouls, but I think overall the game will be a lot cleaner. Not only will the Bulls probably collect fewer bruises against Cleveland than they did against New York,